Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I love keyboards that integrate pointing devices into them, like this one from Logitech. And the other day I got in this one from Lenovo called the ThinkPad TrackPoint Keyboard 2. And this is exactly what it looks like. It is a ThinkPad keyboard and TrackPoint nub integrated into a wireless keyboard for PCs and Android devices and other things that support USB or Bluetooth keyboards. It's really solid feeling. It's got that ThinkPad feel, but it's something that can hook up to just about anything. And we're going to take a closer look at this in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, this came into the channel free of charge from Lenovo. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this keyboard here is all about. Now, the price point on this one is about $100, although it's being sold right now for about $85 on Lenovo's website. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is very much a ThinkPad keyboard. It feels almost identical to the ThinkPad laptops we've reviewed here on the channel. You've got these nice, big, heavy, industrial feeling keys with really deep travel. Uh, you've got the track point nub here that works exactly like it does on the ThinkPad laptops. You got your left and right uh, buttons here along with a scroll button, and we'll play around with all of that in a few minutes. Decent key layout here. My big gripe is that it is not backlit. Uh, so if you were trying to use this in a home theater environment, you'll have to feel your way around a little bit. Uh, if you're a touch typer, not a big deal, but I know a lot of people like these keyboards to be backlit, and unfortunately, this one is not backlit. Now, it attaches to your computer in two different ways, both of them wirelessly. You can use its included dongle here to get a 2.4 gigahertz connection directly back to your device. You just plug this into your computer or tablet or whatever, and the keyboard will pair up with it. The other option is you can use Bluetooth and you configure the Bluetooth with this switch right here. So when it's in Bluetooth mode, it'll work with just about anything that supports Bluetooth. And to pair it up, uh, what you do is just hold this switch here over to the right and that will put it into pairing mode. I got a little confused initially because there's also a Bluetooth key here but I believe this is a shortcut key for Windows 10 PCs. Now there is a switch at the top to move it between Android and Windows mode, and I suspect this switch is for just key mapping so that these shortcuts align with uh, how they would work on the Android platform when it's in that mode, for example. So if you find that the key mappings are a little bit off on your particular device, uh, flick the switch and it'll go back into a different mode. I did try this a little earlier with my Mac and I had it in both of those modes and the trackpad and keyboard work fine on uh, both the uh, settings here. So it should work pretty well across the board and we'll test it out with a few different devices here in a minute or two. Uh, it is rechargeable, of course. There's no batteries that you can replace on this one and there is a charging cable for its USB type C port here. Uh, the battery life on this should be pretty good because it doesn't have a backlight. Uh, so it should give you probably a month or two of operation depending on how much you're doing with it. And overall, I didn't see any battery issues as I've been playing with it. Uh, you do have a little stand here that you can uh, put in the upward position. So it does give it a little bit of an angle, as you can see. It might be a little bit more comfortable to type on a desk. And of course, you can uh, put those back down and have it lie flat. There is no wrist rest or anything like that that it comes with. So you'll have to improvise your own. But if you have a big desk area like I've got here, it should work pretty nicely. It weighs about one pound, two ounces, or about 510 grams. So it feels pretty dense and solid. And I really uh, did like the build quality on this one quite a bit. All right, let's take a look at this thing in action. We're gonna start off with dongle mode here. We pulled the dongle out of the back of the garage on the unit, and we're gonna pop it into the laptop here. You can hear that it detected everything properly. And now what I need to do on this end, first of all, is switch it on. There's a power switch here, which we want to put into the on position. There's a little light on the corner that will light up. And I also want to make sure that it's in Windows mode, which it is, and that it's in dongle position here, because if I'm switched to the right here, it goes to Bluetooth mode. So we're going to switch it into dongle mode here. And now if I hit enter, I can keep typing. So that seems to work just fine. Uh, the little nub here, as you can see, is working, so I can navigate different things, and I can grab that window and move it around if I want. Uh, we can also visit a website, and one of the things that I get very used to on keyboards and trackpads these days is having something that I can scroll with two fingers, but this is old school, so we have uh, the pointer nub. Now I can hit the page down key to scroll quickly if I want, 
or I can hit the middle button here and turn on the scrolling function and as you can see I can move the nub here and scroll at different speeds. So this is something that you may or may not like, but it's how the ThinkPads work with their little nub. Uh, modern ThinkPads also now have a trackpad in addition to the nub here, but this of course just has the nub. So you will have a little bit of a different scrolling experience if you're used to just doing the two finger scroll thing. Now on the top of this here, you've got some function keys with some things that those keys can do. Now of course these are your standard F1 through F12 keys. And if you just push the F1 here, it will register an F1 key press. If you want to mute your computer, you'll have to hold down this function key here and then hit that uh, mute button there to get that to work. Um, but it seems to work for the most part on Windows 10. I did find that some of these functions did not work on this laptop. So for example, when I hit function F9 to pull up the settings screen, uh, nothing's popping up here. So your mileage may vary on a few of these keys, but I found that the brightness controls work fine. The volume here did as well, uh, but not all of them will necessarily map up with your device. Let's take a look now and see how it works on the iPad. So we have my iPad out on the desk now, and we have the keyboard paired up via Bluetooth. All seems to be working pretty well here. I can left click on that article to take a look at it. Uh, that's working just fine. I can scroll up and down if I hold down the middle button here and move the track point up and down. Uh, this works most of the time except when you hover over a hyperlink and when you do that it starts scrolling and then it thinks you're clicking on something and pulls up a contextual menu here. So it's not going to be ideal for scrolling uh, with the middle button. I would suggest maybe just using the page up or page down keys or reaching up and using the screen. But you do get uh, basic mouse functionality here that seems to work fine on the iPad. So all good there. And the keyboard seems to be working as well. So no problems there. My typos of course get fixed automatically. Uh, the one thing though that I found did not work are the uh, special shortcut keys up on the top. So I couldn't get the volume to adjust or the brightness to go up or down and I was using the switch here to go back and forth between Windows and Android mode. Uh, both of those didn't seem to make much of a difference. So basic mouse functionality, basic keyboard functionality, but it does work with the iPad and iPhone. All right, one last thing to take a look at now, and that is Android compatibility. And we've got our NVIDIA Shield TV on the desk, which is an Android TV device. The keyboard is switched into Android mode, and it looks like the mouse is working. So we can click on our app selection here and go over to Downloader, which is an app that my friend Elias Sava made uh, from AFTVNews.com. And we can just click on his website here within the app and scroll around. I can hold down that middle button to scroll. That seems to be working. Uh, left clicks and right clicks seem to be working too. So all good on that front. Uh, the escape key is your back button essentially. So if I go back to the home screen here and hit escape twice uh, to get out of his app, that will uh, kind of replicate that back button you would typically uh, see on your Android devices. Uh, some of these buttons up here are mapped properly as well. So I have my mute here. Uh, volume up and down is working. I don't have a mic on this one, but I guess that would mute the mic. I don't have brightness on this really either, but that seems to be popping up there as well. Uh, the rest of these though don't seem to be working with this particular device, so it'll probably be a device specific thing. Uh, this, device, this button here will go into the uh, multitask chooser. Um, but when I just push it once, it'll just go to the last app that I had loaded up. So uh, maybe of limited functionality there. If I hit the keyboard icon on this particular device, it'll pull up the Android search feature here, um, the voice search. So that is something that goes on there. But overall, pretty cool. It seems to be working uh, as a basic keyboard and mouse with some of the shortcut keys working here as well. And altogether, I think this is a pretty nice little keyboard. It's definitely nicely built. Uh, it's not metal or anything, but it's got a good weight to it. I like that it's very compact. It would work well, I think, in a home theater environment for a compact lap keyboard that has full-size keys that really feel pretty much like they do on the ThinkPad. And if you like that feel, I think you're going to like this one quite a bit. It is a little on the pricier side of things at, at about $85 to $100 but all in a nice solid keyboard here from Lenovo if you're looking for something that reminds you of your favorite laptop. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, and Chris Allegretta.
If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.